welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at another titration calculation for advanced higher. This is the last type of titration calculation and is complexometric titrations. Complexometric titrations happen when you react a metal solution with ligands. The end point is indicated by a colour change which is due to the metal complexes which form or change. The calculation process is the same for all other titrations and is generally looking to find some mass or percentage mass of metal. So step one is always to calculate your average titer. From this you can find your moles of titrant and in general you're then scaling up to a solution within a standard flask. From there you can find your moles of your analyte and then potentially your mass and percentage mass. This is the process that we're going to be following today for the examples that we'll work through together and the examples that you can try. So here we have 3.43 grams of hydrated nickel 2 sulfate and it's dissolved in water and made up to 100 ml in a standard flask. 20 ml of this solution is then titrated against a 0.101 mole per litre solution of EDTA and we use murexide as an indicator. We have the results in the table and we're to calculate the percentage of nickel present in the hydrated salt. So in general you work backwards in these questions from the last piece of information that you have back to the very beginning. So our first step is to work out the average titer. So we need to use only our concordant titers. So the titers that we are ignoring are the first two. So we're going to calculate our average titer using 24.2 and 24.3. So that gives us an average titer of 24.25 mils. Now remember we need to have this in litres. So you need to divide by a thousand before you take the next step. This will allow you to calculate your moles of EDTA using concentration times volume. So the concentration is in the question as 0 0.101 and we multiply by our average titer. That gives the number of moles of EDTA that reacted with the 20 ml sample. So we are going to scale up now to get the number of moles that would be required for the 100 ml flask. So if we have a 20 ml sample, we need to do times this number by 5 to find out how many moles we would get for the full flask. Now to work out the moles of nickel, our moles of nickel will be the same as the moles of EDTA. EDTA is a hexidentate ligand, so it will only react in a one-to-one -one ratio with the metal. So within the flask, you must have had the same number of moles of nickel. Now all of those moles of nickel have came from the original sample, so you can use this to allow you to calculate the mass of nickel. So we can do moles times the gram formula mass of nickel to find out what mass of nickel was present in the sample. So in the sample, we have 0 0.7189 grams of nickel. Our last step is to work out the percentage mass of nickel. So we take the mass of nickel in the sample and divide by the full mass of the sample from the start of the question and then times by 100. And this gives us a percentage mass of 21%. Using the same steps as we've just shown, I want you to pause the video and try this question. So in this question we have 2.656 grams of hydrated nickel sulfate it's dissolved in water and made up to 100 ml in a standard flask. 25 ml of the solution is then titrated against EDTA which has a concentration of 0.11 moles per litre. We have the results of the titration in the table and we're calculating the percentage of nickel in the original salt. So we need to calculate our average titer. So we're going to ignore the rough titer and use the other two 
to find our average title. And we're going to divide that by a thousand so that we have this in litres for the next step. Our next step is to work out the moles of EDTA. So we're going to take concentration times volume. So concentration is in the question and our volume is the average titer from the step before. And we multiply those together to get the number of moles of EDTA which is required to react with each 25 ml sample. Now the moles of EDTA for the 100 ml flask is going to be times 4. And as we have a 1 to 1 ratio with nickel, that is going to be the same as the number of moles of nickel which were dissolved in the flask at the start. So to find the mass of nickel, we can take the moles and multiply by the gram formula mass. So the moles we have from the step above and we multiply by the gram formula mass of nickel to give 0 0.608 grams. So if we want the percentage mass of nickel, we take the mass of nickel which is present divided by the whole mass of the sample and then times by 100. So that gives us a percentage of 22.9% nickel. Pause the video now and try this example. So in this example we have magnesium um, being estimated by titration with EDTA. That's again a one-to-one -one ratio. We have 0.2 grams of an impure sample of magnesium being dissolved in dilute hydrochloric acid. The resulting solution is then evaporated to dryness and the residue is dissolved in water. It's then made up to 2 litres and 25 mls of the solution is titrated with 0.01 mls per litre of EDTA. Our titer is 10 mls, which is required to reach the end point and then we need to calculate the percentage purity of the magnesium sample. So from the question itself, we already have the average titer as 10 mils, but we do need that in litres. So we're going to divide by 1,000 to give our average titer in litres. We then need to work out how many moles of EDTA are within the um, the titer. So we're going to do concentration times volume. So our concentration is 0 0.01 multiplied by the average titer. So that gives us 0 0.0001 moles and that's for the 25 ml sample. We need to scale this up to be 2 litres. So to work out what you need to scale by, you take your 2000 millilitres and divide by 25. So we need to multiply this by 80. So the moles of EDTA that would be required to react with all of the magnesium in the flask is our moles for the 25 ml sample scaled up by 80 to give us 0 0.008. We have a 1 to 1 ratio between EDTA and magnesium, so this is the same as the number of moles of magnesium in the flask. We can then work out the mass of magnesium by doing moles multiplied by gram formula mass. So we have 0 0.008 multiplied by 24.3 to give a mass of 0.1944 grams. We then want to find the percentage mass so we take the mass of magnesium that we found in the flask divided by the mass of the sample at the start 
multiply this by 100 to give a percentage purity of 97.2%. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be updated on new videos and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!